Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 4th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about the potential for both the Atlantic to fire off a number of storms in the next couple of weeks, but also about sea surface temperatures off the US East and Gulf Coasts, which are now much warmer than normal and capable of sustaining very strong storms. Now it's worth noting that there are about essentially three major limiters to hurricane strength, but the primary limiter is sea surface temperature. The warmer the ocean, the, the, the higher the peak potential intensity of a hurricane, because the hurricane itself is, is essentially an engine that moves heat from the Earth's surface, particularly the ocean's surface, to higher levels in the atmosphere, thereby generating a chimney effect and, and firing off storms around a center of circulation. Now, the other limiters to storm intensity are atmospheric winds, particularly wind shear, which can substantially limit the strength of storms, and dry air, which can also rob storms of intensity. But again, the, the primary limiter of hurricane intensity is sea surface temperature. And off the U.S. East Coast and running out into the western Atlantic, sea surface temperatures are, are very warm. And I'm just going to go ahead and provide you some comparisons. So along the 45 degree, I'm sorry, the 40 degree north latitude line, sea surface temperatures are about the same as they are in the tropical Atlantic at around the 13 degree north latitude line in the central tropical Atlantic, where storms typically develop as they move off of Africa. These sea surface temperatures are much warmer than normal, flipping over to an anomaly map, we find that sea surface temperatures in the region of the western North Atlantic are ranging as high as 3 to 6 to even 10 degrees Fahrenheit above average for this time of year. Flipping back to base measures, we also note that sea surface temperatures directly off the U.S. East Coast in the Gulf Stream are, are very warm, ranging around 85 degrees Fahrenheit. But it's also worth noting, noting that even as you move out of the Gulf Stream, sea surface temperatures are in the range of the middle 80s for large sections of the western North Atlantic, drawing a line, say, from New Jersey in the 40 degree north latitude line east to about the 50 degree west line. So this large section of ocean is comparable to sea surface temperatures in the Caribbean or in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, which are typically regions that can sustain very, very powerful, powerful hurricanes. So how powerful are the hurricanes that could potentially be sustained by these sea surface temperatures? And looking at a map provided by w weather maps or WX maps, we find that the sea surface temperatures off the U.S. East Coast are warm enough to sustain Category 5 storms. Now that's, that's rather you know, shock, a, a little bit alarming to me when I see the section of ocean east of the United States able to sustain stronger storms than much of the Caribbean or comparable in the potential intensity that it can sustain to regions of ocean such as the tropical Atlantic or the Gulf of Mexico. Now comparing these two to wind fields, a large region of ocean stretching from the western tropical Atlantic into the western Atlantic into the Gulf of Mexico have warm enough ocean surfaces to sustain wind speeds for hurricanes 
in excess of 155 miles an hour, and in many cases stronger. And it's worth noting that directly off the U.S. East Coast, off the eastern seaboard, for example, wind potentials are, are much higher in excess of 180 miles per hour in ideal conditions in which storms do develop off the U.S. East Coast and wind shear conditions are favorable, meaning wind shear conditions are light, and there's not a lot of dry air that could tamp down the strength of storms. So, so this, is, this is very worrisome for, for storms that do emerge from this region of ocean and move toward the United States. Unfortunately, over the coming days, and, and, and particularly as we get into next week, some of the hurricane models are showing the potential for storms to move along a track that brings them into this region of ocean that is much warmer than normal and could potentially bring them closer to the United States. It's worth noting that forecasts in the range of, of five days or more should be taken with a bit of a grain of salt, but it's also worth noting that the hurricane models in general have tended to show a more active North Atlantic. I'm going to just show you a, a Euro model. I'll go ahead and stop this model really quick. And I'm going to go ahead and bring it back to September 2nd, which is a couple days ago, and advance this model forward. So here we see Florence, which is predicted to move into the central North Atlantic and be turned north by a, a trough that, that is dipping down into the central North Atlantic. However, what I'd like to point out to you are, are this, is this progression of low pressure centers moving off of Africa and running into the Western North Atlantic as the model advances. And so we have not one, not two, not three tropical waves, but four tropical waves indicated at the end of this model. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the model at the end so we can look at it. It's worth noting that the forecast model runs out to September 14th, which is not this Friday, but next Friday. And so looking at this model, we have one storm emerging into this region off the U.S. East Coast, which is capable of sustaining extraordinarily powerful storms due to sea surface temperature alone. A second storm hot on its heels. Uh, a third storm as well, running about, looks like about four or 500 miles behind it, and another system, another four or 500 miles behind the third, emerging off of Africa on September 14th. As I said before, it's the, this, this long range forecast is a bit murky, so the intensities indicated in this model, as well as the general locations of systems, can be taken with a bit of a grain of salt, but this is a very, very active indicator for just a single day in, in the life of, of the early to mid-September North Atlantic hurricane season. And it's very concerning considering the fact that sea surface temperatures off the U.S. East Coast are so warm and so capable of sustaining very powerful storms, the most powerful storms that are possible in the present hurricane category system, the Saffir Simpson, Simpson scale. I'm just going to go ahead and flip over to sea surface temperature anomalies and provide just a general communication about how climate change influences the strength of these storms, namely by increasing sea surface temperatures and providing more fuel for hurricanes. And it's worth noting that historically, this region off the U.S. East Coast does not typically produce Category 5 storms, nor is it typically capable of sustaining storm, storms of such high intensity. And what happens as the climate changes is you get these more powerful storms, or the potential for these more powerful storms, in regions where they could not typically form. And this is what we are seeing now at present as a potential for the hurricane season in 2018. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.